Christian Eden. Hello, welcome. Hey guys, cheers for having me on. Um, uh, I'm sorry about the um, I'm sorry about the backdrop, but I'm in the the dingiest B and B you could ever imagine. So. <laughs> Uh, well, the best. We, well, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll probably challenge you for the first round of uh, the mini bike championship that we stayed at last year, uh, Lewis. That was like Folkestone, I think, where like they shove all the immigrants and stuff. That was pretty scary. So, uh, yeah, you look you look fine. Don't worry about that, Christy. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm not, I'm not sure if the TV's going to land on my head. It's duct tape on up there, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it might be the same place. There you go. Um, bit of danger. Bit of danger. How are you, anyway? Uh, yeah, really good, thank you. Um, yeah, just uh, just waiting for things to kick off in in real terms. Really, um, that's been a a long sort of winter, but one where I've had a really good time. Um, obviously, you just had Coots on, who's a, a new dad, and uh, and so am I. In fact, our children are like a couple of weeks apart, so um, we're sort of going through the same going through the motions and uh, enjoying dad life and yeah when you when you're racing it's really hard to um i don't know really hard to do both things when when my little boy toby was born last year it was absolutely couldn't have been in a busier time in the championship for me i was doing world endurance and bsb at the same time but it was slap bang in the middle of my biggest amount of world endurance commitment so i was away more than i was home certainly for like the three first three months of well for the first like month and a half I think I was home for about four days so um, yeah I missed a lot of that so I'm certainly trying to make up for it now while I've got a, a little bit of free time and before it all kicks off again uh, Well um, yeah we've got our a panel here uh, to uh, to uh, fire questions at you as well and because we are live as well uh, if anyone is tuned into this uh, then uh, feel free to uh, dive on the comments box and uh, and uh, we'll, I promise, ask some some fantastic questions for you, Christine, if, if any come flooding in. So uh, let's start no with uh, with Lewis. Yeah, so looking forward to this season, British Superbikes. You've, you're moving to Oxford Ducati, back to race them on a Ducati. How are you looking forward to racing the machine? Yeah, obviously, like, the, the move back to a Ducati is... I had my most success on a Ducati, so it's pretty clear that I'm excited, but I'm probably more excited, not necessarily for moving back onto a Ducati, but just to try and put um, put last year behind me, really. It was <clears throat> my hardest season, my worst season in BSB since I've done it. Um, not just results-wise, because actually we had a few that weren't too bad, um, but just in general, it was just... It was just an uphill struggle. Um, I've never had a year before where the effort and actually the potential is so misaligned with the results and and everything that went on. It was just it was just hard from start to finish. And uh, yeah, I feel really bad actually on the Hawk Racing squad because they deserve better. We deserve better as a as a group, but just it, it just didn't work. You know, sometimes I don't necessarily believe in luck. Um, but I do believe in fortune. There is a, a very distinct difference in my mind. And we were unfortunate in a lot of instances and just seemed to get the, never seemed to get the run of it. So, yeah, I'm more looking forward to sort of starting afresh rather than looking forward to getting on a Ducati. Yeah, and if we, as you mentioned last season, it wasn't your best season in British Superbikes, but you changed to the Suzuki brand. And would you put your results to last season maybe as struggling to get a set up on the bike, or was it just simply bad luck? No, um, yeah, it's a hard one because racing is so multifaceted. You, first up, you can only control what you do. Um, you can't control what the other 30 lads are doing around you. You know, sometimes they just do a better job um, and you have to accept that. Um, but obviously, I, it was a very late deal, but one that I actually looked forward to coming in as, a little bit as the underdog um, with a little bit of an axe to grind. <clears throat> and actually, the first few rounds were were pretty good. Round two, we were sort of knocking on the door of podium-ish potential. It wasn't quite there, but we were like fifth, sixth, I think, at round two. Um I was um, in the showdown position um, as we were going through those points. So, you know, championship-wise, it was fine. We were building 
in the way that I expected to build. Um, so yeah, things, I wasn't having that winning potential like I had the year before. Um, and the podium was just out of sight, but it wasn't a far reach. Um, and then basically what happened, I got injured at Knock Hill and it was just a snowball effect from there. So I had a sizable injury at Knock Hill. Um, and when I came back from that injury, I just wasn't quite ready to come back. Um, and then also frustration started to set in on my behalf. <clears throat> obviously, well, not obviously, the bike was good, but it was just a slight step down on what I'd had the year before. I don't want to blame the bike or the team because that's not that's not what I'm trying to do. But it was just a, a touch not on the same level as what I'd had the year before. Um, so, yeah, I was riding injured. I was starting to get frustrated because, one, I was riding injured, and, two, I was struggling to do what I'd done previously. So then I started overriding the bike. That never works. And, uh, yeah, it was hard to get out of that sort of downward trend. Then when the my shoulder started to improve, um, we had a few flashes. You know, I got pole position at Snet and things were looking quite good. And to be honest with you, um, we had a, the first race at Snet was a dry race. And I honestly believe we would have podium that. But the, the rear brake fell off uh, midway through the race. And I used that quite a lot. I only missed the podium by a second or whatever. So I think we could have had that. So, yeah, just bad luck at the wrong time. And then continued to build, um, knocking on the door of our first podium of the year at, at Alton Park and uh, just got in an unfortunate incident with Rory Skinner and I was knocked out. Uh, wasn't able to race at Donington. Tried to come back at Brands and shouldn't have done because I was in no fit state. And that's it. Season's over before you know it. So, <clears throat> yeah, it started off really well. One stupid mistake on my behalf. Um, at Knock Hill just um, undid uh, 12 months of hard work basically <laughs> is, is all I can say you know the team deserve more um, the bike is way better than a lot of people give it credit for it isn't the best bike on the grid but it's not bad um, yeah just it was just an unfortunate season and yeah the, the moment that we seem to turn things back around um we were unfortunate again, and and it was it was season done. You sp you spoke about your season being finished due to the injuries. What was the biggest? What was the biggest recovery process? What was the toughest part of your injuries sustained from the your crashes this season? Yeah, so I <clears throat> I had a, um, a crash on the sighting lap, at, and it was the sighting lap. It wasn't even the wall lap at Knock Hill. Absolutely stupid mistake on my behalf. Um, Josh Owens was was doing a very slow sighting lap, but he's well within his rights to do that. And I completely misjudged the situation. And yeah, at the point that I tried to take avoiding action, it was just just too late and took us both down. Thankfully, he was uninjured, um, as I would have felt even worse than I did anyway. Um, but yeah, I um, I broke the top of my arm bone, basically pulled a piece of the arm of the bone off the arm. It's the attachment point to the shoulder. Um, so basically I couldn't lift my arm up at all. Um, managed to get the bike back to the pits before the race started and the team fixed the bike and I managed to start the race from the back of the grid. Um, it didn't necessarily hurt, um, but I realized very quickly that it wasn't rideable or raceable. It wasn't safe to be around my sort of you know, fellow fellow racers. So I pulled in and, yeah, I had to go and get it sort of inspected and um, found out I had a broken arm. So the arm break wasn't necessarily the problem because that heals not quickly, but quite quickly. The problem was all the, the ligament damage, um, which I'm still dealing with at the moment. I have some tears that require surgery, but just don't have time to do it. It's a three and a half month recovery period from it. So I've been having some um, extremely expensive injections, hoping that they work. I'm not sure if they will, um, but basically to get as good as I can. It's not too bad at the moment. It's perfectly rideable, perfectly raceable. It's not going to be a hindrance or an excuse. Um, it's not as strong as it was, but I have myself in a perfectly sort of 
good enough shape that not as strong as it was should be more than good enough. And you spoke well. You, you spoke about your season with Suzuki, and uh, we spoke to Richard Cooper actually about this uh, just a few moments ago. Did the announcement of Suzuki leaving British Superbikes come as a shock to you as well, since you spent last year with the team? Uh, no, <clears throat> I was I was pretty privy to the information quite early on and for, for quite a long time. Um, how you take the news of Suzuki leaving is quite a strange one because quite how much support they give, I'm I'm not sort of privy to that information there are no factory teams in in British Superbikes there's, there's not a single factory team there's no such thing any team can go and buy whatever parts they want off any manufacturer so if um, if you win the lottery and go and speak to Suzuki you can be the official Suzuki team if you like um, there's just no one willing to take on that role at the moment the bike is the oldest one on the grid it's I don't know where it ranks in terms of you know, where would you put it? Um, I would probably like to ride it as much as I would probably like to ride a BMW at the moment. So, and that's a new bike that they're constantly developing and spending millions and millions on. So it's not bad, Um, especially in BSB. Um, BSB rules allow a lot of the bikes and teams to be much more competitive than what they perhaps should be in other championships. So yeah, the bike didn't do anything well, that's for sure. But it didn't do anything bad either. Um, whereas the Ducati, for example, when I rode it, had some really strong points, and I mean like super strong points. But it also has weaknesses. So, you know, the the Suzuki was just an all rounder. Um, I just don't feel like I um, unleashed the maximum from it, just because we never really got full chance to. So, yeah, I don't want to be down on the bike because because I. Cause I I enjoyed the bike. I enjoyed the bike and I enjoyed the team. So it was one of them years. It happens. It's racing. It's the same as it is in life. You know, sometimes things don't go your way and you've got to accept it and learn from it, which I'm trying to do and move on. And if we look forward to this season with Oxford Ducati, of course, you're going to be in a one-man team in the British Superbike class, but you're going to have Ben Curry racing the Supersport class also for Oxford Ducati. Are you going to help Ben in any way? Is there any way that you can help Ben Curry adjust to the Ducati, although it's a different bike? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can help Ben in terms of adjusting and and what he does. Ben's uh, perfectly, uh, you know, talented rider that'll work things out himself, but I'll certainly be supportive. I always try and be supportive, even when it's a teammate that I'm racing against. So when it's someone who's um, I'm not racing against, it's even better. I actually quite enjoy cheering for someone. It's cool. Um, I've pretty much always had a good relationship with almost every teammate I've had. There's a few exceptions, but not many. Um, So yeah, it's going to be different being in a one-man team. Um, You know, the first rule of racing is to beat your teammate. Well, I don't have one. Um, But I do have all of Tommy's data from the last four years that we can can reference against. You know, the tracks are exactly the same. Um, The bike is very, very similar. So I've always been one that uses data. I'm not afraid to use it. I don't think, you know, I think if there's a shortcut, you might as well use it. I'm not too proud to to say I'm not going to do that because I will. You know, if there's something that someone does better than me, then brilliant, you know, show it me. Let's see if I can adapt and do it. So, um, yeah, being a one-man team is is odd. I actually think having Ben there alleviates some of that pressure because having one rider is full focus, which is fantastic. However, it can also potentially be detrimental because full focus can also be very sort of like, it can be heavy. So, yeah, be interesting having Ben. If, if I'm having a bad weekend and he has a good one, it might help keep the morale up or vice versa, you know. So there's there's definitely positives to it. And it's a super sport now is is becoming a really cool class again. It went a bit, yeah, it went a little bit lame for a while in, in Worlds and British. And now it's um, looking pretty cool on, on, on both fronts. So with the extra manufacturers, it always generates interest. Racing is becoming more and more of power to weight ratio style racing than than anything else. And yeah, that's just the way that the manufacturing process goes with, with all different manufacturers bringing out different middle and big weight bikes. So that's the way the racing's going. It's, it's going to make some good, good racing. 
And um, final question for me before I hand over to Christian. Uh, well, the Catty last season with Tom Sykes and Josh Brooks and Tommy Bridewell, they had a tough year for their standards. How do you think the bike is going to be this year? Have you had any signs that they've improved? Or do they know what the issue was from last season with the inconsistency? Uh, I think Tommy had a good year. Um, I think the PBM boys had a difficult year. Personally, I don't... Um, I didn't expect anything different. Josh hadn't had a particularly strong result in nearly a year and a half, so I don't really see why anyone would have expected anything different on exactly the same package. And Tom is someone who's ridden for a long time with full electronics and is the sort of rider that, um, I'm not going to say relies on it because he's fantastic at what he does, but the way he rides is different. And it's a long time since he's raced in Britain and British track, so I was under no illusions as to how hard he might find it. So their results didn't come of any kind of surprise to me uh, whatsoever. I think I could have done a better job on the bike, but you never know. It's proper easy for me to say that because I'm sat here and it's so easy to say, so you never know. Um, but yeah, the the bike hasn't moved on a great deal, um, but no bikes have moved on a great deal. Everything is, is marginal gains. The team's been out um, for the last two weeks in Italy on a very special engine dyno trying to um, understand how to get the most from it. And I don't mean the most from it in terms of power because that's almost irrelevant now in BSB. The bikes have too much power. It's trying to actually get it to the ground. We, you know, we have no electronics, we have no rider aids to help us in that process. So, yeah, most of the time they need numbing and dumbing down. And that's that's becoming far more important than, than any kind of power. So, bikes are always... Yeah, they're always getting better and better. You know, there was there was a couple of years where the Ducati dominated. It was definitely the bike to be on. That sort of swung a little bit in Yamaha's favour before Ducati was probably the Kawasaki. There's always, you never know, a very slight rule modification and, you know, any manufacturer could suddenly be, become the bike to be on. So until you get out there, you don't know what the other teams are doing. Of course, the Ducati is going to be strong. We've seen it in, in World Superbike. We saw it in BSB last year. Um, nothing else has changed too much. So, yeah, I expect I expect it to be a, a very good package that's more than capable of being able to win the championship. So, Christian, um, thanks for coming on again, um, like Lester said. Um, just a couple of things for me. Just going back to, um, you know, just slightly to last year, um, the relationship, obviously, a length of relationship between, um, you know, Stuart and, uh, you know, Suzuki. Um, I'm just intrigued to know, you know, your opinion on the capability now of the Hawk squad now they have moved manufacturers to Honda. Huh. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, Hawk is one of the more old school type teams. Um, they go racing for a pure love of it. Not That's not to say that other teams don't have a pure love of it, but they have a more old-school way of working. Um, we did speak about continuing, and personally, I would have preferred... I would have been more interested in staying if they stayed on the Suzuki, um, because that team knows that bike inside out, and I believe we had a little bit more to find. Whereas a team that is basically having to learn and start again on a brand new bike. That's a, that's a new learning process for the bike and team. So for me, it was it was less ex interesting for me to stay, even though the Suzuki was probably not the best bike. I would have preferred to have got the most out of not the best bike than tried to have spent a year with a team and me learning a bike that could be better, but you don't know. So... You know, every team has the potential. I know when I spoke to them, they were very happy with the support they were getting off Honda. As I said before, any team can, if they've got the money, can buy any parts they want. Um, there's great support from K-Tech and Owens in the paddock and Bitubo, whichever brand you decide to choose. So everyone's... BSB is really good in terms of parity, in terms of what the team, all the teams are capable of achieving. They've got two really good riders 
Charlie Nesbitt is really came of age, especially at Cadwell Park. He sort of had a an awakening there after a really difficult start to his stock thousand. And I think Josh Owens is a really talented rider that hasn't yet been able to show his full potential. Hey, Josh is a funny one. He's um, You probably never notice it unless you watch the timesheets really closely. But every now and again, his name jumps into the top five or six. Um, he's never yet turned it into a result, but it only takes that one that one ride for that to happen and then and then for the ball to start rolling. So that's the other good thing to be fair about Hawk is um, I appreciate that they're, uh, I don't know about investing in younger talent, but they're certainly never scared to put someone on a bike that a lot of other teams might be less inclined to do so, which is pretty cool and, and commendable. So, and yeah, they got me out of the, out of the doo-doo uh, when, I, when I needed it. So I appreciate that as well. Yeah, thank you. So obviously it's, you know, it's a clean slate for you this year. You know, in a way it's a new manufacturer. Are you excited to get back on, you know, on a Ducati with you knowing how much potential the V4 has got? Yeah. Um, I mean, at the moment I'm apprehensive. You're always, might or not, you're always, I'm always sort of like, just want to get those first sort of laps out of the way, get that first, the first test we're going to do is the official BSB test, which I kind of wish it wasn't. I'd rather be not behind closed doors, but certainly not having to go straight out on track with all my peers. But um, the first one's just going to be like a shakedown for us, make sure everything's right. Obviously, the bikes are always brand new. It's funny because a brand new bike isn't always a brand new bike. These things are like triggers brush because they're always getting replaced, you know, so there's always bits. There's, there's never sort of, let's start with a new bike. It's always lots of new parts, but yeah, it's back for me on on a bike that's a, not a conventional style of riding Ducati, different to every other every other manufacturer I've ever ridden. So I need to readapt, which I hope shouldn't take too long. The first time around, it took me a while. It took me until literally the lights went out at round one for me to understand that bike. So hopefully, it doesn't take quite as long this time. But yeah, it's a great package. Um, I was away with the team the other week, and uh, Will, the, the team boss. And also like the main technical sort of director as well of the team, the owner, the boss, the technical director. He's um, he's a proper geek, and I, it's kind of cool. Um, he's really really into it with the numbers. He leaves absolutely no stone unturned, um, and it's yeah, it's it's really refreshing. There's an awful lot of effort, and it's not the biggest of teams. But it's a very well formed team. There's no sort of deadwood in there. There's no uh, no people there for the sake of being there. It is the people that there have got a job. They're going to do it well, and hopefully, I'm going to do my part in that as, as well. Brilliant. Two sort of cheeky questions, Christian. First one is: Who do you see as your main rivals for the championship this year? Well, obviously, we've lost. <clears throat> we've lost sort of. Well, we've lost Brad, we've lost Taron, we've lost Rory, we've lost Tom, um, who wasn't particularly in the championship fight, but he's a top class rider. So there's a few gone out. There's not really anyone particularly come in. Um, I say that actually, we've got every champion from every feeder class going. So there's a lot of people coming, <laughs> but um, a lot of yeah, new talent. Yeah, not the not the big names that we normally get, like at least one or two of a year. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of fresh talent that I've got no doubt are all going to be really hungry. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see. There's, there's usually a learning process, but I think it's hard to look past really the the obvious um, in Jason. Um, he's been so unfortunate um, over the last few years. Always fast, always consistent. He's always there. You know, he's he's never not there. Even when he's on an off day, he's never not there. So yeah, I think I do think Jason is the main one. I think Glenn and Tommy are going to be strong, but literally, I could work my way through ninety percent of the entry list um, and make a make a point for each and every one. But yeah, I think I do think Jason is probably the main the main guy. Yeah, and um, the other question is: you you mentioned Brad and you mentioned Taz. Um, it's very early days, um, you know, lots of different opinions. Um, do you think we'll see them come back to BSB? 
<laughs> I hope not because um, not because I don't want to race them, um, but because I really want them to uh, succeed where they've gone to. I think they've both got a massive task. If I'm honest with you, I'm kind of disappointed for them <clears throat> that they were. I'm going to say the only options they were given. That that makes it sound bad. Obviously, they're fantastic options to get to go and race in worlds, but I just wish that they were both had better options. Um, for Brad to miss the two opening rounds is really hard to come in to any championship. And when the other riders have already got some starts under their belt, they're, they're race ready and they've also tested for two more weekends. It's, it's a massive chunk out of Brad's <clears throat> achieving his potential. Um, but it's a similar bike to what he's used to, as in it's a Yamaha. Um, and yeah, hopefully he can find his flow as he did last year because let's be honest with you, he had a couple of years really off the boil before that. <laughs> Winning the title last year kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and then with Taron, I sort of feel, well, I do feel the same, but almost worse. It's going to be really difficult for him on a Honda in World Supersport on, uh, um, yeah, a bike that's, I don't think, going to cut it for him. <clears throat> I hope that he's got a, um, a multi-year deal and he's going to get a super bike afterwards, but I don't know what's going on with that team. It's really strange. They have, the bikes seem great. They've had some fantastic riders, but they're so far off the pace, it's untrue. So it's a strange one. I, I really wish them both the best because I genuinely hope they both succeed and, and showcase their talents. And I hope they never come back because I hope they really succeed and achieve what they both can achieve. They've got an uphill task, the pair of them, but good luck to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Christian. Um, and just from a personal level, I just wanted to say, you always put 110% in, Christian. You've always got a smile on your face. You know, you always go in there. So, you know, from, you know, personally, I want to wish you all the best of luck for the season. I appreciate that, bud. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, one one just final question as well, uh, Christian. Just before you go, um, you uh, you tweeted earlier, I think today or yesterday, uh, that you were looking for a betting provider or betting website or something. I was just having a quick look at your uh, social media. What what's uh, you're a bit of a gambling person, are you? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't tweet much, but yeah, it was about <laughs> betting. Yeah, I, yeah. I just like a, a bit of a flutter. It's quite cool just to. I, I, I like a bit of a, a, I'm a bit of a long odds gambler. I got kicked off one site because they realised that I was a racer, but all I ever did was lose money. So I don't know why I got kicked off because they were just making money out of me. So. Were you betting on your, uh, yeah. well, uh, don't answer that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess, as it, okay, fair enough. But no, that's interesting to know. And uh, yeah, why not have a little, uh, have a look. Have you, have you had a little bet on the MotoGP this year or World Superbikes or anything? Uh, no, but I'm, um, I'm, because I can't find a, a bookie that's got the odds yet. Um, but I certainly think that um, if Agat is at the right odds, then he's going to be a real good one. Um, and Luca Marini. Because I think not all the the bookies are fully switched on with the bikes yet, so you might get reasonable odds on them. And yeah, what happens is if you really clever, you put a reasonable amount down and hopefully they have a good first few rounds to win the and you put get them to win the championship, have they have a great first few rounds and then you get a better cash out offer. So I don't <laughs> think they're gonna win the championship, but you cash out early and get a few quid back. Yeah, you estimate where their their peak of the season is is gonna be, exactly. I suppose. So yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Well it's always good to know. I, I do have a now and again a very occasional bet myself, uh, just before I get addicted so just finding out where it's like just one or two and be like, that's enough for me I've already won a few quid so. yeah by, by size one bet I meant three quid but you know well I've gone to like 20 pounds once I bet on F1 on that Lewis Hamilton would win the championship and I won like one pound fifty not great odds but still a win's a win and it's all you know you're a high roller compared know, to me but it's you know it's the small victories isn't it so anyway uh, appreciate you really appreciate you coming on the show taking a few uh, half an hour out of your evening in your luxurious hotel you didn't get hit by a TV, so that was a plus. And yeah, uh, still there. yeah, um, and well, I guess we'll catch up to see how uh, how you did, maybe midway through the season, if uh, if you don't mind coming on again. So, yep, yeah, spot on, perfect. All right, Christian, thank you very much for coming on. Speak to you soon.